ये अभी के साथ चल मैं रखता हूँ अभी हाँ कुछ भी आ गया मुझे फोन कर दिया कुछ हाँ ठीक चल रहा है कैन यू हियर मी गाइस <clears throat> all right good so i'll just wait for a few more minutes so that more people can join us and then i will start with this okay <laughs> yeah kush so yeah so meanwhile till the time i start i think i should start in another 4 5 minutes um you can share uh, please understand this is not a vrc class okay uh, so uh, ask me questions related to the topic of today's class which is sort of some sort of a stress relief some exercises that like i'm going to suggest uh, which will help you uh, so uh, please ask any question right now because later on i won't be looking at your comments because of course this is today's a absolutely practical class Uh, so uh, can you share some thoughts or some issues that you're facing in terms of your stress so that maybe i can mold it specifically keeping that in mind so just just let me know uh, if there is anything specific with respect to stress or you know tension or anxiety or anything with respect to that that you want to want me to probably discuss or you know bring it up or whatever so please uh, till the time other people join us okay <clears throat> ritu has asked about time anxiety i think uh, ritu you uh, uh, slight try to be slightly more specific i mean do you mean time anxiety in terms of when you're taking a mock or when you're doing some questions under time constraints or do you mean um you don't have time and you you know you're not able to give enough time to studies or i, I don't know all, all that stuff um monica the answer to your class today um sorry the answer to your question is that uh, i i don't think today's class is going to take care of that uh, how to manage times so is that we can cover dilr vrs and qa practice every day uh, one of the reasons uh, so so i'll tell you maybe i'm i'll be able to help you today but there are two possibilities 
that your question conveys. One is that you you genuinely don't have time. Either you're working. Uh, yeah, you have a job. So uh, since you're working, so I'm speaking with Monica. Uh, so you you genuinely don't have time. In in that case, I don't think anybody can help you. You just have to make do with whatever is available. You know, whatever time is available, you just have to make do with it. And the only thing I can suggest is because see, lo loads and loads of people get through who are working. Loads of them, uh, and uh, I'm sure quite a few of them, if not the majority. Uh, have a sort of equal, equally hectic schedule as yours. So they, you know, manage and whatever. But what I can tell you, one of the best ways for people who are working, plus it also applies to everybody else, even if you're not working, is to show up every day. What happens is that sometimes when you don't have time because, you know, you, uh, you, you had thought that, okay, today I will study, let's say, two hours, you know, after work. And uh, something happened in the office or because of whatever reason, there isn't enough time. And now you're left with only uh, 40, 45 minutes. This is just a hypothetical situation uh, or even half an hour for that matter. So people think that, you know, oh, uh, I mean, this is hardly any time. I had decided to study two hours. It's just half an hour. Well, I might as well, you know, considering I have half an hour after which I have to go to sleep because I have to get up early for my office. So then you may decide to watch a little episode of some series or, you know, watch some random YouTube videos and all. No, that's a mistake. Even if it is for half an hour, study and then go to sleep. What I'm trying to say is uh, something that I have told multiple times to uh, my own students is show up. Uh, the most important part is showing up every day. Everything else is the second, third, fourth step. The first step is to show up. It doesn't matter if it is half an hour. It is preferable. It is uh, damn good if it is more, you know, two hours, three hours, whatever. But if on a given day you don't have, that doesn't mean you don't do. Show up every day as much as is within your power. There are times when it won't be possible, like genuinely possible. In that case, it is okay. But otherwise, you will have to show up every day. Uh, so that's the best thing I can say, okay? Um, uh, Pucks K, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, not a question, I think, relevant to today's class. Um, Very good, uh, Kush. <laughs> yeah. So what basically Nandini is saying and what sort of, I think, hang on. I, yeah, Ritu is saying, um, and what even Arav is saying, these are the kind of things which broadly fall under the topic that I want to discuss today. No, there's no discussion, actually. I'm just going to give you a few exercises to handle these kinds of situations. Okay. Uh, so, so yes, that's what we are going to do. So, Arav, Ritu, Nandini, um, just hang on. Um, Uh, Pratap, I'm not sure if your question is relevant for today's class. So uh, if it is relevant, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding your point here, then it will automatically be covered. Uh, so don't worry. But if it is actually a VRC or, you know, doing well in mocks and whatever kind of a question, uh, uh, this is not the class for that. And remember, today's class is like handling stress, you know, so it's not related to handling the sections. If stress is the cause of whatever you're saying, then we will cover it in today's class. Um, yes, Anubhav, this is what we are going to cover. Uh, uh, Pratap, I don't know if you're talking about uh, accelerate passages, then uh, it is expected. They, they are very, very difficult passages. Uh, I'm. After the first one, I'm trying to sort of mix and match with, you know, one very difficult and one 
it will never be easy in the in the accelerate that's the whole point of accelerate sessions but yeah it'll be moderate as compared to one of them sometimes probably both of them will be of moderate difficulty but all of them will be difficult okay and maybe not very difficult but yeah most of them will be difficult um so anubhav i hope um, what i do today helps i'm not very sure okay um but what your earlier question is, I think today's class should help that. All right, I think the questions are over now, the question session, please don't type anything. We are going to, uh, this is a practice, this is a practical class, as I told you. So we'll spend time on that later on, if time allows, then you can ask me questions. But please stop asking questions. Uh, take today's class seriously. Believe me, it is very, very helpful. You have to do it to understand or to figure out or to believe if it is helpful or not. Uh, you shouldn't decide based on because to some of you what I may talk about today or do today may sound a little uh, uh, you know off track or flowery or you know whatever believe me I've come from the same thought process but try it you know you have to just try it let's say three days and if it doesn't work big deal don't do it you know and uh, the other thing is most of what I'll do will start making sense today itself. That's the beauty. So, but do what I'm going to say with me today and then later on practice it. But but with me, do it. Don't, don't keep busy uh, checking your texts. My suggestion is for today's class, please put your phone. Uh, I mean, if you're watching this on phone, it's a different thing, but then mute your notifications. Just completely mute them. They shouldn't uh, come from the top of the screen. Uh, just completely mute them. This class is important. I think it is going to help uh, most of you, if not all of you. So please uh, uh, don't stop typing, stop your notifications and pay attention to this class. Okay, now, so here's the thing, okay. If you think about stress, if you think about that you're feeling stressed, you know, or you're feeling anxious, there is anxiety or there is fear or there is what is going to happen or my preparation is not going well i'm not performing well in the tests and you know whatever all these so the, the first thing to realize is that uh, these are facts uh, so uh, it's not that you're living under an illusion it's not uh, you know that you are blinded or you don't know what's going on no all of these are facts it's it's absolutely true that things are difficult uh, exams, mocks, these things uh, take a lot of, um, um, you know, effort, hard work, and there is a lot of competition. It seems a lot is at stake because you have to get through a good B school so that you get a good job or at least you can uh, make a name for yourself or prove, or prove yourself to, you know, your parents or your relatives or your friends or, you know, whatever. So these are facts, you know, that these things definitely cause stress. But, uh, but, but, but then let's slightly go. So this is the surface, okay? So these are facts. It is true. But let's go slightly deeper than that uh, and, and ask yourself, okay, so these are facts that this is going to happen. And, uh, but where does stress, stress arise from? You know, where does it come from? Uh, for example, if I... So let's assume I'm a scientist, okay, I have uh, amazing, and, and I'm a scientist of a future era, you know, when humans are far more intelligent than today, and, you know, we have figured out scientific discoveries and all that stuff. So I've come from that time today. And what I do to you is, uh, you, you are studying for your exams, uh, these days, everything is exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same. But except for your thoughts about studying for your exams and preparing and your memories with respect to your family and friends, everything else is the same. I just remove the thoughts of what if. I just get into your head, I operate on it and, I, and let's say advanced science has figured out the specific locations in the brain or the specific even neurons in the brain responsible for uh, whatever 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 and i remove those neurons which uh, are responsible for what if 
what if I can't? What if I mess up? What if I don't do it? What will people think? Uh, you know, my whole prestige will go down, my reputation. All of these I take away. Everything else remains the same, which means you're studying as hard. So now I have a very obvious question to you. You don't have to type the answer. You have to answer it to yourself, which is, um, will you now feel stressed? Just think, I'll give you five seconds to think. If I remove those parts of your brain, will you now feel anxious or stressed? Now, the very obvious answer, five seconds are over, is no. So what does that tell us? That tells us, and I'm not talking uh, something you know out of the world, all of you know this. Uh, so I'm repeating the obvious, but let me still say it. Uh, what this tells us is that, that stress originates here. Stress originates in the brain in the head. This is where stress comes from. And if I try to be more specific or try to be more concrete, like in the head doesn't really help much. Uh, so stress is because of thoughts. It is our thoughts that lead to or create stress and which manifests itself in mental stress but in physical stress as well. You know, your body starts behaving uh, in a stressful way. You become slightly slow, low. Uh, sometimes your digestive system starts creating trouble. Uh, you know, you feel sensations in your feet more often than not. The back of your neck pains, your lower back pains, all sorts of stuff happens. We never think that these kind of things, their cause is mental. Uh, but it is, you know, uh, so uh, not, not of all of these things, but mental also causes these things, you know, pain in or, or various physical manifestation of uh, actually what is mental stress. So it, 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 it all arises in the head, in our thoughts. Now, there are two ways of taking care of this. Okay. One is using the head itself to take care of it. So you can call it as the analytical way of taking care of it. So you think your way out of it. You may have heard of ancient Greeks called the Stoics. These days, the Stoic philosophy is uh, in fashion big time. Okay. So the Stoics sort of had this purview and Greek philosophy, uh, overall, you can say, uh, is very similar to this. That, you know, if the causes of um, most of our problems are mental, then let's take care of it at the mental level, okay, at the analytical level. So you think your way out of it. Uh, so, for example, you may have heard of something called cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, which actually borrows its system from Stoics. And that is what it tries to do. So what, what it very briefly, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapies, tries to do is, uh, so whenever, so there are these exercises you're supposed to do. So whenever a disturbing thought or an anxious thought or any negative sort of a thought comes in your head, you uh, ideally note it down or, or it, at the very least think about it, which is that you think about, okay, this is the thought. Uh, and I'm thinking this, that, you know, it's all over and I'm bad. I'm not too, I'm not good at all. I'm a loser. And, you know, all sorts of I'm scared. And stuff. and then CBT says that, okay, now you try to think rationally. Uh, does it, <clears throat> is it true? Well, how far is it true? Is it true that you're a loser because you <clears throat> didn't do one thing or are not able to do something else? Is it true that your life is over because uh, you couldn't do this or, you know, it, you're finding it difficult? Uh, and so on, you know, so basically you try to rationally think about it and you will figure out that no, you are overreacting. And the more you do this, you will suddenly start think, feeling that, oh, okay, I'm overreacting. Let me come back to, you know, what is at hand and take care of it. So this is the analytical way. <clears throat> and some of us are more... Um, some of us... Our, our inclination is more towards that, our maybe talent or whatever is more towards that. So please make use of it. 
um, you know, so I'll just spend some time very briefly on it. I've already told you a few things, but just very briefly, which is uh, the analytical side, which is um, you have to understand that, you know, our life is made up of events. That's it. That's what every life is. There are events and they happen moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. There's just these events which keep on happening in our life. And some events are amazing. Some events are very bad. Some are bad. But if you, if you sit down one day and think about it, most events average out, meaning most events are average. That's the meaning of average in everything in life. Most people are average uh, in anything. You know, so most people are average drivers, most people are average in looks, most people are average in height and so on. That's the meaning of average. Even though one of the beauties of human beings is that, and this is a thought I'm borrowing from somebody, I know who, I don't know who said it, but uh, an average person thinks he slash she isn't. An average person thinks she or he is not, meaning is not average. So that, that's the definition of average. Anyway, but the fact is that we are average. And, and similarly, it is with everything else in life. So our, our most events in our life are average. And if you think about it, whether something amazing happened to us, which is above average, and something bad happened to us, wherever, somewhat bad, too bad, really bad, and similarly, somewhat good, too good, awesome, whatever happens we keep coming back to that average that's what that's what it is really bad things happen at time at that moment it thought or at uh, at that moment it seemed or we thought that uh, it's all over or what the hell and you know so on uh, but suddenly we come back to that average uh, framework wherein we exist Similarly, something awesome happened and we're like, wow, wow to, from now on, what my life is going to be, I mean, you know, whatever, you you fall in love and you, are, you, you can't even sleep because of that happiness and amazing moments. And, you know, after some time, it's average. Everything averages out. So this is one thing that you have to remember at the analytical level, that it does not matter how bad or how good something is happening to you. Uh, it will average out. I mean, you, you will come back to that average, average you. You can call it average Ritu, average Nandini, average Arav, average Pratap, average Anubhav. Uh, by that, I mean your the what your average is. You know, this is what the deal is. And, and this should give you some sort of a relief that it seems things are not working out. It seems... If this does not happen, it will all be over. And, you know, I don't know what I will do with my life. I will be a loser. What the hell will I do? But you have to realize worst case scenario, if things don't work out. And remember, it doesn't have to happen. But suppose if things don't work out, if this thing doesn't work out, whatever is stressing you, you will still be fine. And you have to just look around you. Everybody is doing fine in life. I mean, the, the, and, the, and, and, and those people you see as really sad or low or whatever are generally the people who cannot figure this out. You know, they just can't figure this thing out. And so they keep stuck in their, what is known as a worry loophole. Oh, sorry, loophole? No, worry um, loop. Yeah, worry loop. Uh, wherein... Uh, you get worried. Uh, I mean, you, you start thinking about something that worries you, which uh, makes you think more about that thing that worries you more and that loop, 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 loop. So, <clears throat> so that is the deal, you know. So we get stuck in that quagmire, in that vortex, you know. And you, if you realize what I'm telling you, you'll be out of it which is not to say you won't feel bad. In fact, we should feel bad. Why should we only feel happy? This is the beauty of life, right? It has its ups and downs, highs and lows, awesomeness and disgustingness, all sorts of stuff. This is what makes life amazing. If life was only good, 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 I don't even know what good would mean then. Okay, so that's the thing. And... So this is the analytical way of thinking about it, that you will be fine, man. You know, you will be absolutely fine. 
you will do fine in life. You will not have to struggle to make your ends meet. And I'm see, I'm why am I so confident about it? Because of because I know that you're my students in the sense I know what kind of background you're coming from. Most of you are watching this on pretty good cell phones. You have these computers, you know, and so on. I think it'll all be fine. So this is the analytical way of going about it. But you, but then it is very simple to uh, listen to me and understand it. Huh? It makes sense. But very difficult to uh, remember it on an everyday basis. So maybe make a notebook, you know, keep a notebook. And whenever you're feeling low, start writing down there. The moment you feel low, write down, okay, I'm feeling low. Why? Because of this, because the thought came. And but then I think I should be fine, right? Because I was low day before yesterday. But then suddenly uh, uh, th the next day I was all over the place. I was like in seventh heaven. You know, so this is how it is. So this is this is the way to go about it. The other way in the analytical, the stoic philosophy is um, do not give too much weight your mental weight and all sorts of weight to things which you cannot control. Do whatever you can to things you can control. Pay attention to what you can change and then put your effort on that. Don't pay attention to what you cannot change or over which you have no control. So for example, how much you study is partly in your control because if you're working, then it's not totally under your control. But the fact that if you study only 40 minutes per day, the fact that you give it all that you have, keeping your phone switched off or at the very least in an airplane mode is in your control. That is what you can do. But what if I don't clear CAT or, or you know, IAMs or whatever is your goal uh, institute? what's the point of thinking about it right now? I mean, what difference will it make? Suppose you think I won't be able to make it. All you are doing is messing up that 40 minutes of concentrated study. Suppose you think, oh, I will make it. I will make it. Uh, so uh, you may suddenly relax. You may suddenly again not give 100% because you've already gotten through. You know, so you have to keep a balance. Of course, that thing should worry you a little bit because that will give you motivation, but only to your, to the point. Similarly, of course, thinking positively that fine, I think I'm going to make it is going to help you again because it is going to give you motivation and all that. But not neither of these things should be beyond the point. You shouldn't do either one of these things beyond the point because this is not in your control. So anything which is not in your control, don't think about it too much. Don't give it energy, time and whatever. Give to what you can control, which in, in this context means giving your very best, okay? Doing what your teachers ask you to do. For example, when I ask my students, so one of the things I ask them is to make a table uh, for RC. Uh, for every passage, so, uh, there is a table for passages and every passage, if you don't know what I mean, you can watch my earlier video here on YouTube only, you'll understand. Uh, so every passage has to fill. Now, recently, I am obviously because now that mocks are happening and all, uh, the scores are low and whatever kids are asking me. So two, three kids sent me messages. I asked each one of them, what about the table? Only one person had made that. Two people started with it and then didn't do it. So then I said, then how can I help you? You know, because you didn't do what I asked you to do and which is extremely crucial. So these are the things. So do what your teachers ask you to do. You would know you are smart enough. You are big guys um, and girls uh, that these are the things I have to do and I should do them. So do things in your control. So anyway, this is the analytical side. Let's look at the non-analytical side because there is a thought and this comes from eastern philosophy especially indian uh, then a little bit chinese japanese and whatever uh, their thought is that uh, how can the very thing which causes problems be the solution and and, and their deal is and and i part and i sort of agree with them their deal is that um, The, your mind is not in your control. I mean, you can keep telling yourself, I don't want to think these thoughts, but the thoughts are like, um, 
they have a mind of their own like so so this is a beautiful play of words your mind has a mind of its own and and what their deal is and i think here i almost totally agree with our eastern framework which is you can do whatever you want but to your head you know i won't i'll think this i won't think this and whatever whatever it will not matter it'll it'll just come with its own thoughts and hence uh, eastern philosophies especially uh, you know a, a very ancient hinduism and from that uh, buddhism and then buddhism made it its own so specifically buddhism has come up with these amazing uh, ways to take care of this so basically what it tries to do is it tries to sort of it's a misconception by the way uh, at least in buddhist meditation it's a misconception that the idea of meditation is to silence the mind no not in buddhist meditation what it instead tries to do is it says okay you can keep thinking your you, you brain you my mind can keep coming up with whatever you want whatever you want but i will keep doing my own thing okay this is the basic idea i have to be very brief because of the time limits of these sessions uh, but that is the basic deal that i know i cannot control my thoughts but what i can control is what i do when i realize that i was thinking this this by the way uh, it also is something that stoicism also talks about and because of which uh, in uh, th there is a thing that th there is a connection between ancient greek especially stoicism ancient greek philosophy and uh, uh, indian philosophy especially buddhism uh, but uh, and nobody knows which came from where but it is most uh, researchers their guess is that it went from india and how it went is when uh, when, when alexander came to india and so uh, you know lo lots of philosopher kind of people also came and you know whatever so for example king king milind you must have heard it's it's a buddhist uh, literature there's uh, was uh, most probably a greek king who was ruling in a part of in a kingdom of india i mean meaning one one kingdom so anyway uh, that's not the point the point is that uh, so so this is what that tries to do that that the moment i realized that i was thinking this or or rather i i don't think according to buddhism thoughts come now please understand what i'm trying to say because this is very very important thoughts come versus i was thinking two completely different things according to buddhism it is rarely that we do the thinking nine times out of 10 thoughts come to our head and then what we do the moment we the sort of the first thing is to realize or to notice that thoughts have come and according to buddhism that itself Uh, should take care of most issues but then then we do this then we do this and then we do this okay fine so this is the basic deal i will come to this exercise um, slightly later all right uh, but before that um Yeah. Before that, I will uh, do a few relaxation exercises with you guys. Uh, a vatsa marut chandilya. This is not the focus of this class. For God's sake, don't get into this. Okay. This is one thing that angers me. I'm very sorry. Why aren't you bothered about that? There is a philosophy which is good. It could be Hindu, Buddhist. christian islamic sikh persian japanese just let's just do what is amazing out there and there's amazing in the world out there why are we stuck with whose it is 
you know so i don't know i'm i'm very sorry this this just trips me off i'm extremely sorry um okay so yeah as i said that before before i get into that that part that i spoke just now i i just want to uh, do a few very brief uh, not do i want to teach you a, a few very brief relaxation exercises uh, which are instantaneous by that i mean that uh, what i was talking about just now uh, could take some time for you to you know develop to understand to become better and better at it it's a lifetime process but of course you will start becoming better after a week on but provided you do it but what about you know even then or right now you suddenly are panicky or you know you are scared or you're feeling anxious or you're taking a mock and suddenly you're like what the hell my first section got messed up what will i do in the other section and you know all that what to do then okay so but but before i do that guys remember what did i say that um um so suppose you're taking a mock and you messed stub the first section and you know now you come to the second now, now you may think that are but then now if i start doing what magister asked me to do won't i again end up wasting my time well you be the judge so let me give you two possibilities you don't do this and you carry on with that anxiety and stress and you mess up the remaining thing whereas you spend one minute and believe me one minute uh, on this and hence in increase the chances or or create chances to do better in the remaining sections you know so it, up to you totally okay uh, all right so now i want you to yeah, akshat it won't happen here please watch the earlier video i don't know what uh, um So I want you to be in a position wherein you can sit straight. You don't have to sit on the floor. I mean, if possible, then do that. No problem at all. The basic idea is that you should be able to sit straight. By that, I mean your back should be straight. Don't make it straight. Don't unnecessarily strain it. You know, don't do that. But it should be straight, and you should be sitting nicely. Uh, you know, stability is what is important. You should be stable. it could be the chair but don't lean uh, uh, at the back of the chair don't try to uh, you know don't make use of the backrest uh, come in front uh, sit straight or you can sit on the ground uh, you can sit in that indian postures of sitting on the ground which are the most stable very amazing okay uh, so do that and uh, yeah so first do that okay so if you're standing if you're moving around if you're in front of the tv relaxing on your sofa no go and sit somewhere where you will not be disturbed and where your back can be straight it could be a chair as i said it could be the floor it could be a stool whatever it is but your back should be straight don't strain it don't stress it out okay and i want you to close your eyes and uh, to aid you in closing your eyes i will stop my video so that you stop looking at me all right um, so please do this what i said and then i will start talking okay close your eyes you can place your hands uh, on your knees or on your lap and if you're sitting cross legged you can also place your hands right inside your lap with both hands uh, so your right hand on top of your left hand and your thumbs touching but it all of this is not compulsory you can keep your hands on your knees if that makes you comfortable all right <clears throat> pay attention to your tongue and relax it 
let it go loose in your mouth as if it has no strength. Just let it fall inside your mouth. Do the same thing to your jaw. Relax the jaw. Make it as if it is falling down. Pay attention to your eyelids and relax the eyelids. Relax the eyebrows. The space between the eyebrows, the muscles around your eyes, relax them. Relax your full face. Feel your face relaxing. Relax your diaphragm, which is above your tummy and below your chest, that part. Relax it. And then relax the upper part of your stomach or belly. And, you'll, and let your breathing be soft and easy. Imagine you're in a very comfortable setting, a place that you like, very peaceful. Imagine being there. Now let the muscles of your back relax, your upper back your lower back, relax your arms, your hands, your fingers, relax your legs. Feel your weight on the chair, on the stool or on the floor. And feel all the tension and stress draining out of you. Wherever in the body you're feeling that stress, first notice it and then feel. Don't push it, but just feel as if it is going out, draining out of your body. And feel yourself sinking deep into the earth. Letting yourself be truly grounded. Feel this. All right, this is one thing that you can do. Okay, so it, as you know, it doesn't take long. Since I was talking, it still took slightly longer. If you do it in your head, it will be much faster. All right, here's another one. And this is one of the best ones, by the way. Uh, it's the breathing exercise. Uh, four, five, six or four, five, seven, whatever you want. So let's do a four, five, six. Okay. So basically what we'll do is uh, you will breathe in till a count of four. I'll count it. And then you will hold that breath. Please don't breathe out. You will hold that breath till a count of five. And then we will exhale, breathe out till a count of six. So I'll repeat. We will breathe in till a count of four, meaning we'll keep breathing. And don't overdo it. Don't do it fast. Just be normal. We'll keep breathing till a count of four. I'll count, as I said. Uh, we'll hold till a count of five. Neither breathing in nor breathing out. So, breathe, uh, so holding the in-breath. And then we will breathe out to a count of six. Okay, so let's do that. So again, sit straight. Uh, your hands could be on your lap or on your knees. You know, your back should be straight, but not too tensed. Close your eyes. And now let's start breathing and I'll count. Okay, so breathe in. One. Two, three, four. Stop. Two, three, four, five. Start breathing out. Two, three, four, five, six. Remember, you have to keep breathing out till the time I'm counting, and similarly, keep breathing in till the time I'm counting, and hold the breath till the time. So you have to adjust your rate of in-breath and out-breath as per my count of length, okay? All right. Breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five. Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six. In, Two, three, 
four, hold, two, three, four, five, breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now you can breathe normally and let me come back to the video and where were we yeah tell me guys now um uh, how was it did it make sense you can now type tell me uh, did it make sense I'm looking to my right because that's where I can see your comments. Okay, so, um, but I'll try to look ahead also. Yeah, tell me, uh, did it? Uh... Okay, very good. So these two exercises you can do whenever the moment you're feeling uh, anxious or, you know, sad or frightened or, you know, stressed and whatever, you can start doing it uh, at that moment. Okay. Here's a surprising one. Uh, very, very surprising. Okay. Um, uh, which is, uh, and, and please do it. Uh, okay. Uh, with me uh, i don't know how i'll do it uh, but let's do it uh, together which is uh, yawning and and this as i said will come as a surprise so just um, just yawn you know just yawn you don't have to probably make a sound but just just yawn okay just yawn take a loud yawn i mean loud by that i'm sorry a long yawn and when you breathe out, uh, meaning when the yawn, obviously yawning is when you yawn, it is in. And when you, then it is out. When you out, then just let go. Just, you know, it's like in those horror movies, sometimes when uh, the person who is uh, possessed is exercised, you know, not exercise, but exercise, you know, the exorcism. So uh, suddenly in English movies, the mouth opens and lots of stuff comes out. So feel like that, all the stress, all the dark things are coming out, you know. So let's do it again. So just yawn, you know, and long yawn and then do like that. And tell me, did it work? Of course, if you yawn in front of others, then everybody will start yawning. As we know, yawning is contagious. <laughs> I can't see any comments. It didn't work. I mean, it's okay. You can always say that, no, it didn't work. It's absolutely fine. But I think it works. I mean, and it's a very surprising thing, though. So... Maybe it is because of the lag. Maybe you're able to hear me much later than when I'm talking. Yeah. I hope I'm... Oh, 
Oh, okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So now we will do another one, which is going to be slightly longer. Meaning, uh, so again, one of the uh, faster acting ones. So, but it's going to be slightly longer than the earlier ones. Uh, but it, it is very, very helpful, and you can. So you may not be able to do it during and mock or whatever, but you can do it during the day when you're feeling stressed and all, and you have five minutes to spare. Again, it won't take more than five minutes. Uh, but uh, uh, so. So yeah, it, it's it's a good exercise. So we'll do that. Yes, Nandini, I think I think it works because of that. Because sleep somehow is anti-stress in the sense that if you're feeling stressed, you generally don't get sleep, right? And so if if something if you're feeling sleepy or you induce yourself, then you know it, it it sort of automatically means that you're not stressed. So probably that is the connection. You know, I don't know the connection, but that's it. Okay, I'll again go off the uh, video. Uh, please again sit straight, close your eyes, uh, put your hands on your palm or whatever. Back should be straight. Don't stiffen it. And uh, yeah, uh, so let's let's do this. Okay, in this one you can close your eyes if you want. You can even open your eyes. Some people find uh, eyes open to be more comfortable, but then your gaze should be lower. The look at um the ground just a few feet away from you okay uh, or you can close your eyes that's okay and now focus your attention on the breathing the in breath and the out breath focus meaning don't change the breath don't do anything to it uh, just notice it you know it's like very lightly placing your attention on the breath the in breath as well as the out breath. Now you can do it uh, mostly in two places, one of the two places. You can either do it right at the tip of your nostrils because the air going in and the air coming out is has a distinct feeling there. So you can place your attention there or you can place it on your belly. And if you pay attention, then you will notice that when you breathe in, your belly comes out. And when you breathe out, your belly goes in. So you can just focus on that out and in motion of your belly. Again, you don't have to change the breath. You don't have to slow it down or, you know, nothing. You just have to notice it. Just notice the breath uh, at the nostrils or in your stomach, in your belly. Okay, now that you can feel the sensation of the in-breath and the out-breath, every time you take the in-breath, just make a mental note, a mental notation, breath. And when you breathe out, do the same thing, breath. You don't have to speak it. It has to be a mental note, okay? So breathe in, breath. Breathe out, breath. Breath, breath. Just make a mental notation. And just as we discussed some time back, you will notice that your mind has a mind of its own, as I said. So thoughts will come. And even though your intention right now, your motivation right now, your goal right now is to focus on the breath, but thoughts come and go, which, which is proof, if any, was required that thoughts are not in our control. Okay. So here's the thing. Breath, breath. So you make a mental note, in breath, out breath, breath, breath. And the moment the thought arises, the mental note is not breath. Meaning the moment you notice that a thought has taken you away from the breath, make a mental note not breath and come back to the breath because that's the goal right that's the point so let's do this breath 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 not breath 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 i leave it to you for some time now
it doesn't matter it could be the most beautiful thought in the world or it could be the most terrible thought in the world it doesn't matter because it is not the breath and we are supposed to pay attention to the breath so either it is breath or it is not breath and if it is not breath please come back to the breath don't judge yourself if the thoughts keep coming remember the mind has a mind of its own don't judge yourself don't force the thought out don't fight it just recognize not breath and very gently let go and bring your attention back to the feeling of the breath it is breath or not breath Some of your thoughts may be tender, very caring. Some may be extremely cruel, very hurtful, stressful, anxious, fearful. Doesn't matter. They are not the breath. See those thoughts, recognize them, and then let them go. Bring your attention back to the feeling of the breath. Here's a wonderful analogy. Thoughts are like the clouds in the sky. Some of them are light, fluffy, beautiful looking. Some are dark, ominous, very threatening. But they are not the breath. Just let them go. Our habitual tendency is to grab onto a thought, build an entire world around it, or to push it away, to struggle against it. But you have to realize that the thoughts come and go of their own volition, of their own will, as if. But you stay balanced, you stay calm. Simply recognize it's not the breath and very gently let it go. One breath at a time. Breath, 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 breath. When you feel ready, you can open in your eyes and tell me how did it go? All right, now here's the deal, guys. This one, of course, when you're feeling stressed or low, whatever, you can do it for the, these three minutes, five minutes. But this is something that you need to spend time in. Okay, this is something that you should slowly, slowly increase uh, how much time you give to it. So you can start from five minutes, 
then give it six minutes, then give it seven minutes, don't overdo it, then give it eight minutes, then 10 and you know, so on. Um, 10 minutes you can do for a few days, it's a decent time, but then ideally you should be doing about 20 minutes of this per day. And believe me, if you do it for a few days, you will see changes. And this 20 minutes or even half an hour, but 20 minutes fine, is an investment, guys. It's an investment. It seems like a cost. It seems like I'm taking this away from um, something else, maybe studies. But I'll give you the most beautiful reply to this by anybody. It was by a Buddhist monk who, who said that you should meditate for half an hour every day. And if you find that you don't have time, then you should meditate for one hour every day. So I don't think I can give you a better thing. So it, it's, it's a, it, is, it is an investment. You will find that giving time to this actually reduces the time you take to do other things because you will focus better. By the way, this exercise will increase your concentration levels, which is perhaps the most amazing thing you can develop right now. I'm sure you will agree. And, you know, so, so, so think about it. You're distracted. The thought has risen. You're coming back to what you're supposed to focus on, the breath. And then you just have to think, you just have to extrapolate it to your everyday affairs. You're studying, you're distracted, you come back. You're studying, you distracted, come back. Again, got distracted, again, come back. And this is what I will tell you. Who was it? Uh, uh, Ritu. Yeah, so thousand not breaths. Absolutely fine. As I said, do not judge yourself. Absolutely fine. I'll tell you what is the most amazing part. If those 1,000 times you noticed not breath, your work is done. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is we get lost in thought. So if let's say breath, breath, and then you go on somewhere only, okay? And then after the 15th thought, it could be the same associative one or distinct thoughts, all sorts of things happen. After the 15th one, you know, like, oh God, I was supposed to focus. And so you... You just notice the 15th one and the first to the 14th are all over. Then, you know, th those 14s are lost. But then it is still good because the 15th you came back on. And the idea is that this should become 14, 13, 12, 11, you know. So I... I don't overreach in terms of your goals and you know whatever because as i said your mind has a mind of its own you think you can tame it oh man try it as as we just did so don't do that your focus is breath breath not breath and how between a breath and realizing a not breath how much distance there is that's all don't judge because this is what brains do. So why will you feel bad that if you cannot focus on the breath? Be because the brains think. They're like, as I said, clouds in the sky. They will come and they will go. You just have to realize that, oh, they are clouds. The, the, the significance of this with respect to today's class is we get caught up in those clouds. So the cloud is dark or ominous. We're like, oh, man, this is reality. This is my reality. This is life. No, they are clouds. Just like clouds, they will come and they will go. They are crossing. Till the time they are there, it is darkness, it is dingy, it is scary. But they will go. Because that's what clouds do. That's what thoughts do. Okay? So this is uh, this is the deal. And, and yes, Abhishek, and everybody, please, believe me if you do this every day. And you take it to 20 minutes and do it every day, you will see drastic difference in your concentration, your ability to focus. Uh, Anubhav, I, I think it's a symptom. So it's not, uh, it's, it's a symptom. And the cause I think is anxiety, stress, especially because maybe you're being too hard on yourself, too hard on yourself, something else could be going wrong <coughs> in your life or around you. 
So just just do these things. Believe me. Just do these things and uh, uh, whatever. And uh, so if if you feel this as your second message says during meditation, yes, because there's a baggage. There's a baggage that you're carrying. Uh, so that is one probable cause. In which case, you just have to, uh, you know. Uh, think differently about it you know so basically what happens is we uh, uh, if we cannot focus on the breath then we we find another reason to beat ourselves up you know but as i said that's a mistake because brains are supposed to think so it will think so the point is not to stop the brain from thinking at least not in the kind of exercise i'm talking about the point is to Notice when your thoughts have taken you away and come back to what you're supposed to focus on. In this case, breath. But in everyday life, this will translate into everything, you know. So like you're studying, you will notice that you're being distracted either by your thought or by something else. And you are developing a skill, just like any skill. You'll, you're you not good at it today, you'll become better at it tomorrow. And you will come back to this. Okay, so this is one probable cause. The other probable cause, uh, Anubhav, is that um, you probably, when meditate, you know, people uh, sometimes have noticed it, so I don't know if it is true for you, they, they start deliberately breathing. So don't do that. Let it be natural. Again, the, folk, the point is to notice whatever it is. So suppose, so let's say in your case, suppose it is heavy breathing. And by the way, uh, it is specifically mentioned in the text huh? that, uh, so suppose your breath is uh, heavy, it is dense. So, so what are you noticing? Heavy breath, dense breath, shallow breath, fast breath, long breath, deeper breath, slow breath, whatever it is. So instead of just breath, maybe put one adjective to it uh, in your mental note. But don't let it bring you down. That's the way your reality is at that moment. It's a heavy breath. Well, heavy breath. Don't let that be another reason to, you know, uh, feel stress. So do that. And you will see that as, we move, as you move on, it will become much, 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 much better. But you have to stick with it. So don't, don't bother about it, okay? Uh, no, it is absolutely not uh, abnormal. Uh, however, it is very unlikely part. So I, I'll tell you what the probable cause could be that you miss out on your thoughts. And suddenly you realize uh, something and, and so you don't even realize the realization and you suddenly start focusing on the breath. This is the more likely possibility. I'll tell you another possibility, but this is the more likely possibility because uh, like when I meditate, sometimes I feel like, oh, I'll tell you an analogy. So a lot of times when we are driving or riding a bike or a car, a uh, lot of times suddenly we realize that you, so wherever we were going and suddenly we either reach there or we have reached somewhere and we realize, oh shit, I've forgotten. Uh, meaning I, I have no idea about the last 10 minutes. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't remember driving, crossing those, you know, those things that I cross every day what the hell and so it has happened to me and, and sometimes i felt scared that what the hell i mean was i zonked i mean what is going on but then it turned out it is very very normal so something like this can happen that uh, you think your mind was empty because you didn't even realize that you were thinking that is one possibility more likely possibility the other possibility is that actually what you're saying is true in that case the man you already reached um, i don't know how you are maybe already you're close to nirvana i don't know <laughs> so i don't know what else to say so that's uh, possible mm. Okay, so guys, time's up. I wanted to do one more very good exercise. Let's see if I find some time some other day and do it because that is going to be also extremely helpful. But for today, we are done. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And take care and please do this. Okay, uh, do this. Uh, the, 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 remember, the, these things or anything make sense only if you try it. Do it and do it sincerely and repeatedly. That is the more that is the most thing. Okay. Um so Vinid, if you remember, I've given you two things. One is 
at the time of stress. So that is, you know, whenever you're feeling anxious or afraid or you know whatever at that time you can do those earlier one this last one uh, yes uh, prefer, i mean depends on when you are fresh so if you're fresh in the morning please go ahead and do that morning is preferable uh, and, but most more important than the time of the day is the same time of the day because your brain uh, should know that this is the time for this also it should be a part of your schedule don't um, one mistake is okay whenever i'll find time i'll do it ah oh, doesn't look like that i i think you know this with everything if you want something to become a habit it you have to make it uh, a part of your schedule so that is what is very important okay uh ritu uh, the best answer i can give you is these exercises or at least the last one and I think you were there in the earlier class also, which one we had privately, meaning Takshala kids. Um, that one uh, should help you. I, I think you haven't been doing it. Uh, so you do it and it should be taken care of. Uh, there are specific recommendations, Akshat, for sleepiness and whatever. You please uh, message me on Telegram, okay? At Massey is, uh, let me see if I can type. Uh, with a double Y. I mean, that's not my actual spelling, but I wasn't getting the ID on Telegram. So this is my ID on Telegram. So you can message and I'll try sending you something. Okay, Akshat, uh, for that. Uh, it's just a, uh, it's just a, you can say, uh, who, who is it, Bulb Nation. Uh, it, it's, it's just a, a part of or a type of uh, mindfulness uh, meditation. So you can just search for mindfulness meditation, especially mindfulness breathing meditation. It, it, it's, it's just a type of that uh, Bulb Nation. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and take care and good night. And please do these things. Bye-bye.